Why Odin's sword is the perfect size for Zoro, even though he is twice his height? Ah, uh, that's, that's quite true, isn't it? Odin is a very big boy, while Zoro, well, he's more of an intermediate sized boy. So Enma actually should be about this big, and the only reason why it looks normal when wielded by Zoro is, uh, I don't know, perspective. There we go, mystery soul. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are heading back into Enigmaville in order to examine some of the more profound unsolved mysteries of One Piece. Because mysteries are a very important factor of the fabric of the series, and I'm not just talking about the obvious stuff either, like, hey, what is the One Piece? Because these curious question marks exist at all levels, and there are even points where a subtle mystery can be even more mind-blowing than the larger riddles of the series. So let's get into an example of that. Moons. That's right, I said moons. Plural. These shapely wannabe planets are some of the most subtle mysteries in One Piece, but they also hold such profound intrigue. In fact, your casual One Piece fan probably won't even realize that this world does possess multiple moons, some of which even contain intelligent life, AKA aliens, ooh. But this is something that was first fed to us during Robin's flashback. Within the tree of knowledge on Ohara, there is a scale model of the planet with not only one, but seven satellite moon thingos, including one moon moon, which is this little moon floating around the, uh, the other moon. And they all have quite unique shapes, but where things become incredibly interesting and mysterious is when we examine the central planet itself because it really, really does not look like the One Piece world as we know it. Instead of one grand continent that we know as the Red Line, the planet would appear to have several continents, including one that does potentially circumnavigate the globe like the Red Line. But what is unquestionable is that this is not the One Piece world as we know it. Which brings up all sorts of crazy thoughts like, how old is the scale model? What happened to the planet? Or even my favorite, of the questions, which is, are we even on that planet? Or do the events of One Piece actually take place on one of the satellite dwarf planets? Imagine that. After spending an entire series exploring this truly gigantic world, we discover that there is an even bigger one out there. In any case, that is a heavily outlandish idea, probably not at all correct, but it's one of hundreds and hundreds of thoughts that this glorious moon mystery evokes. To get a bit more grounded now, let's turn our attention to Blackbeard, who is practically a living mystery in and of himself. There are plenty of obvious question marks at play with this man, the most common idea of which is consuming multiple devil fruits. We've spoken about this a lot on the channel though, and there is in fact a mystery concerning Blackbeard that holds my attention even more, which is the idea that Blackbeard has never slept in his life. And I should say that as far as we know, this is but a rumor. It was stated by Buggy after the battle between the Roger and the Whitebeard pirates and never actually confirmed. However, it is yet another piece of curious evidence to add to this ever-growing pile of, uh, Blackbeard. And I love this mystery in particular because there's something just really sinister about the thought of someone never needing sleep. Something that makes Blackbeard sort of supernatural and a clear segregation from humanity. And what's crazier is that a lot of people seem to hold some form of insight into this mystery, such as the entirety of the Whitebeard pirates, apparently, because at Marineford, Marco even commented, that's true for normal humans, but as you know, Teach isn't normal. His body is odd. Maybe that explains it. Explains what, Marco? What body? What thing? What what is going on, you teasing bird man? But I also feel like odd is a bit of an understatement here. Whatever the case though, this question has resulted in a wide range of proposed theoretical answers, a very popular one of which is that Blackbeard has multiple personalities or even life forms residing within him, one of which takes the reins of the body at any given time. And there's even been a more scientific approach taken with some suggesting that Blackbeard may even have central hyperventilation syndrome, which is also known as Ondine's curse, which essentially causes respiratory arrest during sleep. Meaning that just like classic Nightmare on Elm Street films, falling asleep could quite literally kill you. And personally, I probably wouldn't go too far in the more scientific direction, but the entire concept of Blackbeard is just maddeningly fascinating. I want the answer to this bag of mystery so bad, but at the same time, I also very much enjoy the thrill of not knowing. That's very much what tends to be the core power of mysteries. As soon as they're solved, they lose almost all intrigue, which is a bit of a shame. But now for something I've never particularly been intrigued about myself, but the fan base in general seems to bring up every other day, is the mystery of who is Luffy's mother? A question that I think pops up more out of human curiosity than any sort of deep story or world building thread. It's just one of those things. We don't know who his mother is, so uh, who is it? I've not necessarily ever really cared myself though, because if we ever do find out, I see it as being more like a rouge situation where it turns out that Luffy's mother once existed and then died under tragic circumstances all wrapped up within a single chapter. With that said, I do sincerely hope I'm wrong because it would be cool to see an extended story of Luffy's mother and perhaps the impact she had on Dragon. Maybe she was the catalyst for 
for his entire crusade against the world government. Or maybe not, maybe she was just some chick who did a thing and birthed a baby. This isn't the only parental concern that ever comes up though. I also hear a lot of speculation and curiosity about Zoro's parents, Nami's parents, Frankie's parents, and I, uh, I just don't really care about parents as much as probably literally anything else in the series. But to be fair, Oda did eventually do something quite grand with Sanji's parents, so maybe there's hope for the rest of the Straw Hats, maybe. But with the current rush towards the end of One Piece, I just don't feel like those mysteries are likely to be answered. At least not in the way that many people are hoping. Now for something minor that I care about much more than parents, we have inanimate fruit. Specifically, I want the mystery solved of when and how Kinemon ate his devil fruit, not only Kinemon, but also Kondro and Raizo. Several fruit powered vassals that have no knowledge of devil fruits, despite all being users of them. It's a very minor thing, but just odd in the grand scheme of things because it's never really addressed, ever. In Odin's flashback, Kinemon is not a fruit user and then somehow magically by Punk Hazard, he is. And there is seemingly no time to discover and consume a fruit after traveling forward in time. So I suppose what may have happened is that at some stage pre-time travel, the original user of the Fuku Fuku no Mi died on or around Wano and Kinemon just so happened to be digging into a delicious piece of fruit at the time, which was swiftly turned undelicious and then allowed him to inherit his quote unquote jutsu. For something far more mind boggling now, let's talk about what happened to God Valley. Other than Laugh Tale, I think that God Valley is probably the most interesting unknown location on this entire planet. In the space of one chapter, it completely eclipsed Elbaf for me anyway, just thinking about what happened there with Garp and Roger versus the Rocks Pirates. And the fact that the world nobles were present on this island when they really should have been up at their safe space on Mari Joie. Space being a pun there because they dress like astronauts. God Valley was not simply an incidental battleground like the unnamed island where Roger and Whitebeard fought for three days and nights. God Valley seems to have been a much more pivotal location of substance and it has the ever alluring mystery factor of being an entire island that just up and vanished. Was it moved? Was it destroyed? Is it somehow hidden? It's curious, ever so curious. And if you do want to delve a bit further into this topic, then I'd highly recommend this video, which breaks down absolutely everything that we know about God Valley which while recent news to us in the grand scheme of readership, immediately became one of the greatest mysteries in One Piece. For a more modern mystery now, we turn to Dr. Vegapunk, or more specifically his newest invention, the ever strangely named SSG. Well, actually maybe that's not quite accurate. It's not been specifically stated that the SSG is Vegapunk's new weapon. I suppose it may be some sort of group or mechanism designed to wield the weapon. I mean, what could SSG stand for? Like the, uh, the special science guys. But this is a mystery that should not be neglected because whatever it is, it was deemed powerful and relevant enough to not only cut ties with the seven warlords of the sea, but to actively pursue and capture them. And prior to this, we were led to believe that the seven warlords or the five warlords, or maybe even the four warlords, I don't know, does Kuma count anymore? He's more of a, more of a taxi. However many there are, we were led to believe that they were absolutely integral in order to maintain balance of the very planet. So whatever this SSG thing is, I think we're in quite for a world changing ride. And I know I say this a lot, but after after Wano, this series will never look the same again. Not from the perspective of pirates due to the fall of potentially two emperors, and not from the perspective of the marines due to this new and mysterious development. For a true question mark though, let's turn our attention to Capone Gangbeige, who following the Paramount War decided, along with most of the supernovas, to head into the new world, only to stumble upon uh, this. An object, I think, that can only really be described as quote unquote, this. In many ways, it actually looks like some sort of floating moon an island with its own gravity that was able to pull the fire tank pirates up onto it. And whatever it is, it's a thing that has never been mentioned again. Just this bizarre mass with its very tiny little stubby feet things. And it's one of those mysteries that may very well never actually have an answer because it doesn't necessarily need to. Kind of like the shadows we saw at the end of Thriller Bark, which we have covered in a different video. It could just be a thing that exists in the world purely as a mystery. Something to retain intrigue in One Piece long after we discover all of the essential questions about what the One Piece actually is, what happened during the Void Century, Joy Boy, and all of that. Now here's a mystery that many anime fans don't even know about. However, it has been one of the most hotly contended questions in the One Piece fan base for almost a decade now. And that question is simply, who is this dude guy drinking with Crocus? So in case you're unaware, in the manga, there's this very fun concept known as cover stories, where we get to check in with characters all throughout the world and see what they're up to. And none of this ever seems to make it into the anime because of, um, well, I don't 
actually know. And one of the more impactful stories is this one, which is on the cover of chapter 631, featuring Crocus drinking with this mystery figure. What's more amazing though, is that almost 10 years on, we are slightly closer to actually solving this mystery because the figure's hat we now know was clearly made in the Wano style. And you could potentially argue that the rest of his clothing is very Wano-esque as well. So past popular ideas have been that this may be Golden Lion Shiki, which is probably simply because of the hair, which isn't long enough, or that it could be Scopa Gaban, the final key member of the Roger Pirates that we have never met. Theories even go to some pretty outlandish places, stating that this could even be Kozuki Odin or Toki having traveled through time, although the hair doesn't particularly support either of those. Then again, we should also remember that Oda drew this figure in 2011, and over the course of 10 years, designs can change. Oda is quite notorious for showing us these fun teaser silhouettes, only to radically redesign a character during their actual introduction. So it's pretty fascinating, and given the Wano connection, we could actually have an answer to this one pretty damn soon. But let me know who you think it is in the comments. But as for something we may have to wait a bit longer for, we also have the ever enduring mystery of the life and times of one Bartholomew Kuma, former monarch of the equally as mysterious Lobe Kingdom and a man who has been linked to every major faction in the series. He's acted as a pirate, he was seemingly a loyal agent of the world government, and in stark contrast to that one, he was also a member of the Revolutionary Army. Kuma is a truly insane figure to think about, because even what we know of his personality is sparse and contradictory. As far as we've experienced Kuma, he's a pretty chill, calculating guy who seems to be working in our favor. At the same time though, he is also feared globally as an extraordinarily vicious pirate, even earning himself the title of tyrant. And then there's Bonnie, one of the other biggest unknown quantities in the series with a clear connection to Kuma, even infiltrating the reverie as Connie, queen of the Slobe Kingdom. Or is she actually Connie pretending to be Bonnie? I don't know. Whatever the case, this whole Kuma rabbit hole is a very deep dive where you will find no answers, only more questions, lots and lots of questions. But unlike some of the mysteries I've stated in this video, this is one that absolutely needs solving. And if you'd like to explore some more One Piece enigmas, then please do check out the Unsolved Mysteries playlist. That's right, there is so many of them that they even have their own playlist. So I look forward to seeing you there.